Today I'll be going over a dynamic programming problem which I um, came across recently and it goes as follows. We're given an array of n integers, a1, a2, a3, down to an. We want to divide the array into m non-empty contiguous partitions such that the sum of the maximum integers among all m partitions is minimum. We are to give an algorithm to compute the minimum sum. And so let me actually explain what this problem means. Suppose we have this array. Let's say our array A is this. 1, 3, 5, 2, 7, 8, 6, 1, 0, 2, 9. And we want to compute, okay, let's say there's another one. And we want to compute the optimum way to partition it. But just let's just say we want to partition it into three three places now in this particular problem. So one possible way of partitioning this array into three is this. This is just one possible way. And we can see that the maximum in this partition, that is 0, 2, 9, and 1, the maximum is 9. The maximum in this partition, that is among 7, 8, 6, 1, is 8. While the maximum in this partition is 5. But the size of the partitions don't necessarily have to be equal. In this case, they were just equal. So we could, we could have picked our partition in this way. We could have partitioned our array in this way. Where this, okay, yeah, we could have partitioned it in this way. In this case, the maximum in this partition is 8, while the maximum in the second partition is 6, or the, and the maximum in the third is 9. When we add them, it's 8 plus 6 plus 9, which is 23. While in the first case, it was 5 plus 8 plus 9, which is 22. So you can see that we actually got different sums. The first one was smaller than the third. And we could have partitioned it in a different way again. We could have said this is our first partition. This is our second partition. And this is our third partition. So in the first partition, the maximum number is 8. That is among 1 up to this point, up to this 1. In the second partition, it just consists of 0, so the maximum is 0. In the third partition, the maximum is a maximum of 2, 9, and 1, which is 9. So in this case, the sum that we actually obtain is 8 plus 0 plus 9, which is 17. So you can see that depending on the way we partition this array, we can get different sums. And the problem is to find the best way to partition the array. But in fact, we just want to compute the minimum sum. So how do we solve this problem? Well, one thing we can notice is that we always, we always have to find the, the maximum in a certain range, right? So in this range, this is one to one. We're always looking for the uh, in this one, one to one, so this is the maximum is eight, and this zero zero. So we always we always have to find a, a maximum in a certain range. So maybe we should think about a way to uh, a solution of the problem that will involve computing that. So first of all, let's define something called m, which is a short form for maximum. M i j. And m i j is simply the maximum number in the range i up to j inclusive. So mij is the maximum number in the range i to j. Okay, so let's define another function called opt ij. Opt ij is the maximum sum, is the minimum sum rather, the minimum sum that we can obtain by 
by partitioning or should I say by dividing our array A into J parts starting from position I now one thing you should notice about this opt IJ is that opt 1M is actually what we want to compute that is the solution to our problem so if we somehow know opt 1M which is the minimum sum that we can obtain by partitioning array A into M parts starting from position 1 it basically gives us the the value that we, we want to compute because that's what we want to compute okay another thing that you should also notice is that if we start from a certain position I and we want to partition the array let's say this was our array we start from a certain position I and we want to partition the array into just one part then we have to pick the whole array because there's no way to partition it so opt I1 is simply the maximum number in a range I to N now understand that what this means is that if we start from I and we want to find the best sum the, sm the sum that we can obtain by partitioning this array into just one part then it definitely has to be the maximum because we cannot break the array into two parts or three parts or whatever parts so we, we definitely have to pick the maximum so opt I1 that is if we want to partition the array into just one part it has to be M I N which is the maximum number that in the range I up to N another thing that you should notice is that if we somehow compute all the M's then we can use that to compute the opt or should I rephrase what I'm saying what I'm saying is that if by some means we are able to compute smaller values of opt then we can use that to compute the one that we are interested in and that brings us to the dynamic programming aspect of the problem so if we want to break this problem of computing opt i opt ij if you want to break this problem into smaller parts then how are we supposed to do it well one way to do it is to think of this problem as follows suppose this was our array suppose this was our array and this was some position i this is some position i and this is some other position j this is uh, some other position let's just call it t although that's not really important in this problem but suppose this was our start position this is i and we want to compute opt ij remember opt ij is the minimum sum that we can obtain by partitioning the array a starting from position i into j parts so if we want to compute this well think of it in this way if we start from position i and we want to compute this sum that is opt ij then we must pick our first partition right so suppose this was our first partition suppose this was our first partition and it ends at some position k so ik is our first partition then if we have somehow picked our first partition by some method by some means if we somehow know exactly where the first partition ends then we definitely have to partition the rest of the array optimally right because if it was not optimal then we could partition this one optimally and use that instead of the one that we have chosen so if we pick some some end of the first partition if we pick some place to stop the first partition so this is our first partition 
If we decide to stop our first partition at some position k, then we have to partition the rest of the array optimally. And remember, we have to partition the rest into j minus 1 parts because we have already picked the first partition. Okay, so what I've just explained is actually the dynamic programming recurrence. What's remaining, what's, what's left, is just to write it out as a mathematical um, equation, just to write it out as a Bellman equation. So opt ij is equal to the minimum of m, I'll explain what this means, of m i k plus opt k plus 1 j minus 1. Where k ranges from i up to n minus j. Now, what exactly does this mean? It means that if we somehow know exactly where our first partition ends, then we incur a cost of m i k because that has to be the maximum in that partition, which is this. And then we somehow have to partition the rest of the array starting from position k plus 1 optimally. So we have to partition the array starting from position k plus 1 into j minus 1 parts optimally. So that is what this recurrence means. And one thing you should notice is that we actually don't know exactly where this k is. We don't know what k should be. So we have to try all possibilities of k, ranging from i up to n minus j. So that is why k ranges from i to n minus j. And n minus j is exactly the point where you have j minus 1 parts remaining on the other side of the array, that is starting from k plus 1. So that is exactly what this recurrence means. That's what this Bellman equation means. So. This is a solution to our problem. This is actually the full solution to the problem. But one thing you should notice is that we're somehow using this MIK, which, well, is something we can compute directly. If we're given MIK, we can just go from range I up to K and find the maximum number in that range. But we can do this in a slightly better way. And one thing you should also notice is that this solution I just wrote here runs in order mn assuming that we can get this in order one that's just assuming we can get it in order one but if we do it in the naive way that is just going from i to k then this actually would take order n again so this sole solution would take a really long time oh should i say i said mn to mn square because k ranges from k spans from i up to n minus so we also have to try k so it, it depends actually on this so this is this anyways the whole point of what i was saying earlier is that using memoization it's gonna take other m n square time because um, once you essentially store all the values of opt in some sort of table and the values of mij in some sort of table, then you can just look them up and then use them to compute the value. Anyway, that's basic um, dynamic programming stuff and memoization. So, let me actually go over another detail, which is how we can actually compute mij in order 1. After performing other n square processing by the way that's a simple way of computing it but there are multiple ways I'll just go over this one this particular one so first of all let's understand that mij is in fact the maximum number in the range i up to j by our definition that is what it is but well, we can compute it in the following way. Mij is actually the maximum of 
M, I, J minus 1, and A, J. Where M, I, I is equal to A, I. So what exactly does this mean? Well, this means that suppose we wanted to compute, suppose we want to compute um, the maximum number in the range I up to J. And by some means, we have already computed, I mean, somehow we already know the maximum number in the range I up to J minus 1. Then we don't have to look at that range anymore. All we simply have to do is to compare the maximum that we already have with AJ. And that will give us the maximum in the whole range. So that is what this equation means. It means that in order to find the maximum in the range I up to J, we simply have to take the maximum of the maximum in the range I up to J minus 1 and AJ. So that is, that is basically what this means. And using memoization again, this computation can be done in order n square time. And you can essentially look it up in order one time. But you should also keep in mind that this is not the most efficient way of computing this. It is possible to compute, to do some sort of processing in order n time and then be able to make a query about the minimum number or the maximum number in a range in essentially order one time. So that, that's using something called range minimum query, which I won't go over. But you can look it up on Google. You can look up range minimum query and range maximum query. But what that basically means is that it's possible to find the maximum number or the minimum number in some range use it after order n processing in order one time. But that still doesn't reduce the complexity of our problem, so order n squared is fine. It's fine. So the total complexity of the whole problem based on of the solution that we've given is basically um, order... I mean, this one, the previous one dominates, so it's basically order m n squared time. Or, which is essentially n cubed, but it's essentially n cubed. Um, that's when m becomes very, uh, as large as m. So that's that's the solution. What remains is to go over the code and the programming aspects. And um, I'll point out certain issues with that which you might want to look into when you're programming this. So this is an implementation of the dynamic program in Java. Um, you can see the m array over here which does the maximum value in a certain range. This is the opt array that I use to compute the answer to the problem. These are the base cases and this is where I evaluate the the dynamic program and this is the, the answer that I'm returning over here. And this is just an example evaluating. The only thing that you have to be concerned about here is that it's possible for you to get a value that is not the minimum because you you run the function on an array from left to right rather than from left, right to left. So that's why I had to run the solution function on the array as well as the reversed version of the array. But that's the only catch.